I really like the idea of working with challenging uh, contemporary artists. I first came across Albert Irving's work in the flesh, so to speak, about four or five years ago. Immediately I could kind of make a connection between the idea of journeys and voyages, particularly sort of metaphorically thinking about art is, is a journey. It was something that young people particularly could engage with. Advanced skills art teacher Rod Hepworth has introduced Year 8 pupils at St Christopher's School, Accrington, to contemporary artist this, this Albert Irvin. This is the sequence in which he painted it. That was at kind of the end of the first day of painting. That's what he, he'd got. It's a matter of very quickly getting as much of the area covered, first of all. And then on the next uh, day, he comes in and he starts to put some big areas blocked in over the top of it and he goes through day by day and the nice thing about that is you can see how he's over painting over the top of it. I really like Albert Irvin to be able to learn about an artist who's still alive than rather than an artist who's lived hundreds of years ago. Albert Irvin's work is like very abstract and like not very like realistic but they look pretty cool. It is very abstract but I think if if you look kind of deeper into it there's a lot of emotion put into the work. I like how he's used sort of bright colours and um, how he doesn't need a picture in front of him to influence him, he just remembers it in his head. That's quite something to be able to do that. A recurring theme is the process of art as a journey and the Key Stage 3 pupils are encouraged to use technology to explore their local environment. The project aims to provide a context for looking at Irvin's work whilst encouraging unique personal interpretations. That's shown us that, yes, we can do that as well, taking a random picture and turning it into something that it isn't. Can I make a painting about human experience without having to depict appearances? Can I paint the human spirit rather than the noses and the feet? Can I reveal the splendours and agonies of life through space, colour, shape, line, confrontation, rhythm, and inflections in the paint. When I showed the work to pupils, everybody was kind of blown away with it. And I said, oh, wow. And so when you get that wow factor, you know that there's something there worth, worth uh, investigating. The interesting thing about this project is that thinking about Albert Irving and his journey across London and how he records it you know, in his mind as he's, as he's traveling. So the idea, came to me was they're constantly using their phones or cameras to record little bits of their journeys or videos and I thought if we could take grab bits of that we could use that in that way on our screens here so to put it onto a pen drive put it onto the data projector blow it up and then make the selection so you're actually composing it if you like on the data projector and then simply to transfer it very quickly with charcoal and then for them to take it away and start painting just kind of pick out, you know, the basic shapes and the forms and things that are going on. And it's really important that we try and encourage the use of, you know, modern technology. The video cameras, the mobile phones with the camera attachments are really cutting edge stuff. And I think it will really make these children quite aware of what they're doing with the cameras, composing it with the pictures rather than just taking snaps. Don't get too much detail. Remember, we're not bothered about the features you know, noses and feet and stuff, just the general shapes. But I think what's quite nice is get some of that lettering in, some of that yellow lettering, which is quite abstract, isn't it? Yes. OK, good. That's fine, great. I'll tell you what you could do, right? And then what you'll have in your picture, you'll have the... You'll have that movement of that lorry as though it was there and then it's moved across and then if you also take that up there so yeah. it's, it's almost like a double double take of it isn't it i like it how you've even got the the chimneys on them yeah the i was quite pleased how i did around the signs to make it stand out because there was quite a lot of those in the picture so it was 
it's quite a lot of people as well, so it was it was a good eye good to draw around them. A lot of teachers, when I talk to them as going around other schools, say to me, well, I find it very difficult to teach con uh, con contemporary art because I find it difficult myself to understand and therefore I'm uncomfortable with it. So there's quite clearly a, a need to develop the work of uh, contemporary art practice. And particularly important to try and get rid of where you put your, your charcoal guidelines in. Get rid of that, paint that out. It's quite strong. Some of them have got lots of confidence and know what they're doing, but other people just need a little bit of help now in terms of how to use colour and how to mix. And, and the next layer, because at the moment they're quite flat, aren't they? The next layer is to think about getting some movement into the, into the pieces. Especially if you keep standing back from it and see that quality of vertical colours, yeah. almost like stripes going through it. And then you've got these smaller figures, which you can use a smaller brush later on. Yeah, Just that's what I was thinking. Yeah, some of the big air, yeah. yeah. Good, OK. I want some that looks like sort of contrasting to these. So right, so it's something that's going to work yeah. against this, this yeah, green. Yeah, so it stands out a bit. Right. But I'm okay. thinking of a colour. Yeah. Right. Um, well, you could you could get that blue with some white in it and just make it. Yeah, so like Yeah, and it would still work quite nicely with that. I don't want to kind of install my ideas into what they're doing, so that everyone's doing this, the same version of it. But at the same time, they have had exposure to Bert Irving's stuff, so they've seen the way that he works: big, bold areas, uh, the materials they're using, rollers, paint, big paintbrushes, palette knives. Uh, in a way, that kind of determines what the outcome is going to be because they, they're not going to paint very small, detailed faces and so on. The picture, uh, I, did, I zoomed in like half as much as you can, and I've got the van showing it moving as it's going along, which I think is quite a nice idea. And um, I'm just going to try and like, use a dark colour, then a light colour to make them stand out. Pupils uh, often at this age get really hung up on things like I can't draw or I can't paint a face and by, by getting rid of that problem we're, we've kind of let them become quite creative. Uh, later on, once they've done the underpainting, uh, I shall get a bit more interventionist. I'll perhaps be coming through and saying, wait a minute, how are we going to try and get movement in this uh, piece of work? And have a look at how Bert Irving does it. So it might be that he simply drags some paint across or he might drip some or splatter some. This is amazing. Just scan it across. To that side. Everybody can be creative in some way or other. Particularly with the, the situation we're within computers and ICT, uh, everybody has the opportunity to do kind of creative things that they never envisaged before. But it also has an effect on so many aspects of life. Children are quite creative in the way that they dress or the way that they want to decorate their rooms or what they do on their bags or a whole heap of things. And most subjects taught in school are fairly narrow, fairly prescriptive. You know, you start here and you go down there. Art is very much kind of lateral thinking. And wherever you start out at, it could take you in all sorts of areas. But over here, when you start it, it's a little bit stiff, a little bit flat, isn't it? So I think the first thing you need to do is to try and pick up some of that quality into this here. If you look at the main points of the programmes of study, you're talking about knowledge and understanding, and so certainly by looking at the work of an, a living artist, you get insight into that. And then the practice and skills, which is the making and the doing. If you simply took uh, some yellow paint, and you took some red paint, which do you think you would add to which? Which colour, if you were mixing an orange, would you want to mix? Tom. Would you add the lighter colour? No. Would you add the red to the yellow? You add the red to the yellow, yeah. If you add the yellow uh, to the red, you might find you're going to have to take half a pot of it in order to get the lightest sort of orange you want. Whereas if you take a small amount of the red, and introduce it to the yellow, uh, you'll find quickly that you're getting an orange. In a project like this, I think it's really important that you leave it quite open. If I'd have said to them, well, I want the outcome to be a particular thing, they would have then been quite bound to follow that route. 
Whereas if you'd have said to them, the outcome is going to be a piece of work which does this, they would then have been questioning and saying, am I doing it right? Will it be what you want? If you're not careful, you get everybody turning out the, the same sort of artwork. I didn't really think it would look anything like this, but it's given me a lot of ideas as to how to like finish it off and to create the image of movement. And actually doing a, a painting of any sort, any piece of artwork, is a journey. And it starts, at, so like all journeys, right at the beginning, where you're a little bit uh, unsure of where you're going to go to. But as you start to make your way through the journey, you start to see the, the progress you're making and you kind of see where it's taking you. And I think with the, the idea of the journey that Irving talks about is because physically he takes a journey. And what we're doing here is we're kind of reproducing our own little journeys through a, a, a space in time, a townscape, uh, a local street with people moving around it. Some people have started to scratch into it to allow a break up in the surface. Other people have put it on with a palette knife quite thickly. Some people have just gone quite deliberately and scrubbed it with a paper towel and then gone over it again and are building it up. People's lives are different and all that. Some are vibrant, some are kind of dull. And just people in general as well. It's the contextual bit which uh, a lot of, I think, teachers find difficult because they've got to see the context in which uh, a certain artist can be related to a practical project in a, in a classroom. That's something that is quite meaningful because students are aware of, of their journey through a, a painting process. I just wanted to go through it very quickly and, and sum up what I think we've achieved from it. The first thing I think which is really important is that it's extremely sophisticated. I mean, you really have done very well to get this level of achievement. Uh, you know, right in the middle of year eight, it looks as though it's a GCSE group. The second thing is, the size of the work that we were able to do um, was also very useful because, you know, obviously if you're working on a bit of A3 paper, you can't do anything like the, the uh, material that you've done here on the, on the large board, so that's a big help. Clearly the material we've been using, we've been painting with as well, is acrylic, which also helps. You know, look at the colour, really vibrant. So as we look across here, what strikes me more than anything else is that we've got such a huge variation. You know, we've got this almost uh, realistic work here where you can see the figure sort of striding towards you. And uh, we've got this here, which is quite abstract. We've got another one over there, which is a very abstract piece. We've got some really lovely finished work, well painted, well thought out. And the beauty of it is that it's all originated from your mobile phone technology. I'm really surprised what I could do today. I've never really thought that I'm extremely good at art compared to some people. Well, I'm happy with it because it's very abstract and that's what we're trying to achieve. But if I was going to change anything, I'd probably make it a bit less abstract because you can't really tell what some of the things are supposed to be. I'm happy with my piece and I don't think I'd change anything. I think it's really good. For me, it's been quite inspirational. Thank <laughs> you.